Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have the long-awaited update to my DD5 infographic. Uh, you know, the I think uh, this infographic has stood the test of time. I created it initially right after I completed DD5, which I think was in what December. Um, and the game has, you know, given us some more teal gear. The devs have given us some more teal gear. It's not quite as insane as it was in the beginning, but Let's face it, it still is very tight. And so I think my overall philosophy for this infographic has not changed. So I want to just explain to you how I've approached this. And one thing I will say, by the way, before I get into the meat of this, uh, this infographic was created with lots and lots and lots of input from people who are running DD5 now or have recently run DD5. You know, there are more people in it. It's still way too tight. It's way too constricted in terms of gear. But I've been getting a lot of input from folks. We actually have built a really great community on my Discord. The DD5 channel is full of people exchanging ideas and advice and criticisms and theories and so forth. And, and it's been very helpful to me. I've gotten a lot of ideas from there. And so I will just say this infographic is not just my views, but really I would say um, a... Um, a mix of a lot of people's views, but my dominant philosophy here remains the same, which is that because DD5 is really, you know, easier than DD4 was when it came out and easier than DD3 was when it came out, you really should focus on the characters that help you the most outside of DD5. You know, people ask me all the time, how will this character do? How will that character do? Can I one shot the notes? Can I do this? None of that really matters because if you're struggling to get teal gear, what is the rush, right? Are you gonna, you know, try to one shot the city node so you can get so you can just sit there and wait for more more teal gear to get into global? Like there's no rush. So take your time and gear up the characters that will actually help your account. And so that is my philosophy here. And it explains my choices in my infographic. In other words, if I wanted to focus on which characters will perform the best in the nodes, then this would be a different infographic. But my focus here is actually on, you know, giving you options so you can make the choice of what will help your account most, because I think that's a better investment for your gear. So the, the other thing that is important, and I, and I rem want to remind people about this again, is to track your gear carefully. Choose characters that use less gear pieces than you're missing. And not only do you need to balance amongst the origins, because there's so many mystic characters now that you have to be, and I'm going to talk about this as I walk through this, you're going to have to be careful about which, you know, which uh, characters you use mystic uh, gear on, because they're just, you could fill up so many teams with just mystic characters. But also you're going to need to think about which characters use health catalyst versus damage catalyst. So, for example, you know, the... Um, the, uh, you know, the uh, Eternals are going to use, let's say, Damage Catalyst, but a lot of, for a lot of other characters, you know, they, they gobble up Health Catalyst. So you're going to really want to make sure that depending on the Catalyst that you have, every piece you have, because we have a new, you know, color of gear for this set, for this particular uh, uh, round of DD5, to make sure that you are taking into account exactly what you have. You'll want to use a gear tracker, and we have one of those on my Discord, which is linked below. <clears throat> All right, let's go to City. I've totally revamped City. I have taken off the symbiotes. You may say, wait, Philosopher, but the symbiotes actually do really well. And you know what? Symbiote Spider-Man and Anti-Venom did do well for me. <laughs> However, um, the, I just don't see any good reason to put teal gear on the symbiotes. I did it because I was racing DD5 you know, five months ago, but now that, that there are, you know, now that we've gotten further in the game, I just can't see spending the gear there when you could put it on the web warriors. For me, the web warriors already were a viable choice and I had them, or at least I had some of them on the infographic previously. Uh, um, and, uh, but I put pretty much, I put the entire, I put the entire team on here now because, you know, originally had them on the infographic because, hey, they're the they're a raid team, so they're going to be helpful for raids. You know, you can use them outside the game mode, which is true. But now with the Scourge event, they're even more important. Having big web warriors is pretty much the key to doing well on that Scourge event. And you will you can see in the game, I 
brought my Web Warriors from Gear Tier 14, where they were for raids, and they were actually <laughs> totally fine at that level in uh, Difficulty 3. Now I brought them all the way up for my, my own Web Warriors up to Gear Tier 16. I even bought six Red Star and Scarlet Spider and Miles, so I have six Reds on all and seven on one. <clears throat> so, you know, my point being that there's value in having these characters large. So, and what I've done here is, you know, originally what I did is I put kind of the cheaper uh, uh, Web Warriors on here, all the ones that were three, because I felt like, well, why would you spend four? <clears throat> why would you spend four? These are the, the teal gear slots. That's what these numbers are uh, below. So this is how much, roughly how much teal gear you can expect to use. I'm like, why would you bring up Web Warriors that take four gear slots when you could take ones that, that, that only take up three? The issue is some of them do do better in the nodes than others. So in my DD5 channel on my Discord, which I've linked below, there's been a lot of discussion about OG Spider-Man. He's amazing in the nodes. He's so good. His kit's so good for Dark Dimension because he heals himself. And he obviously, the, you know, the defense down in the stuns are very helpful. And all of that's true. Um, and really, I, the, the question to me, I even put a top performer because I have all the feedback I've been getting. The question, I suppose, is... You know, do you care enough about performance in the nodes? You want to save yourself a week or two or three, um, you know, versus paying, you know, getting a little bit less in gear. So, you know, the reason that I was focused on some of these cheaper options, the the three that the three uh, web warriors that only cost three slots, <clears throat> my view was they are, you know, might as well spend less teal gear. But I can see if you really if you want to do better in the nodes and you're frustrated with some of these other ones. You could bring an OG Spider-Man. Uh, Miles doesn't perform as well. I mean, the, the the two best performers are here with the fiery ring around them. So those are the two that I think perform the best. If you want to focus on top performers, these you know these two, you know these two don't perform as well. Particularly Spider Punk. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but they are cheaper. Morbius is a, is actually performing very well for people here. The issue with Morbius is just he's mystic. And so he's part of a, um, you know, a meta war team and he's good for Scourge, although not necessary to have a gear tier 16 for Scourge. Um, and, you know, yeah, and he's not expensive in terms of gear, but he's mystic. These cheaper options I left in because they just, it's, it's not just that they only have three teal gear slots, but there one is tech one's bio and they don't require health catalysts which can be a real bottleneck for folks okay and then i put here a note this is the only note i put on the entire uh infographic that spider dunk spider punk struggles in the nodes because some people who've brought spider punk get really frustrated outside of raids his kid is just straight damage which does very poorly in the nodes my view is you just drag through characters you know, even if they're not great, you know, Black Bolt also isn't very good. But my view is you just drag his butt through the the nodes because he just fills a slot and, you know, whatever. If you want him outside of DD5, you do what you got to do. But I'm putting this note here because some people who have brought Spider-Punk have been disappointed by that. <laughs> um, so that my view in terms of City and what you should do, you know, I still think that the new Warriors, Cloak and Dagger are great choices because... <laughs> Um, you know, they are uh, so great in raids and, you you know, they're very helpful to have there. You know, and they're, they should last there a long time. I mean, to me, this is the best raid team right now, the new Warriors. But um, they are mystic. And so if you want to focus, let's say, on your Darkhold Arena team or the Eternals or something else, I think it's totally viable, viable to go hard in the Web Warriors, but that's a lot of bio gear. <clears throat> Remember, you're going to get all five origins at different, you know, roughly equal levels. So for most people, it's going to make sense to either do, you know, some combination thereof. A lot of people are doing just cloak because he does better on his own um, than without dagger than da dagger doesn't do very well without cloak. And, you know, although he's a miasma character, it's also a bottleneck. And then they do some combination of the web warriors. <clears throat> all right, let's go to global. So you're going to see here, I've added the Darkhold characters. A lot of you, you are going to be saying, well, should I just go Darkhold? Well, here's my thought. If you care about performance in the nodes, I don't think these characters are all that great. 
Okay, they're just okay. Um, however, I think, you know, see how I say reasonable meta choices? I think it's a totally reasonable choice to say, you know what, I want to have a big arena team. I don't care if it takes me longer to get through global. I don't think I care if it takes me longer to get through DD5. I just want to gear my arena team. I think that's a totally reasonable way to approach DD5. Is that the right choice for everyone? No, but I think it is a totally reasonable choice. Wong in particular, you're going to want to have geared up. So that's not unreasonable. What I think the best choice is, personally, is to do roughly what I did, <clears throat> which is to bring in the Secret Avengers, which are still a meta raid team, and then a couple cheaper options here from the uh, Weapon X squad. I included Kate Bishop because she's also tech and in three slots. So I think that is what I think most people should do. I included Ghost here. Ghost is, you know, just okay. I mean, her stats aren't great or anything, but she does provide in Dark Dimension a persistent offense down on all enemies, sort of like how Yo-Yo does uh, everywhere. And I think that is very valuable. You don't see it. It's not flashy, but it's 50% less incoming damage, which is pretty substantial. So, you know, I've kept, you know, this is a crowded field, but I still think the tried and true way of going with these three skill characters, you know, don't use, not using skill up here. Don't bring Shang-Chi, bring your skill, three skill characters here, and then bring a couple cheaper options, I think is the best move. For Cosmic, um, the, you know, the, uh, the, I don't have enough data to suggest to tell me how good Heartless is, I just with his long cooldown, I don't expect that he is uh, lighting the world on fire. Um, but I think you know the Eternals and Kestrel remain top performers here. Obviously, the Eternals are now eclipsed by Darkhold, but they're still extremely good. Okay, so I think any of these choices are fine. People who have brought in these cheaper options, which I included in the last um, infographic, have also done well. And like I said, Heartless is another one where I don't think he's going to be the best choice here. But I think it's totally viable given that you are, um, you know, for example, <laughs> you know, going to want to have him in your arena team. Now, <clears throat> some of you may wonder, wait, Philosopher, why did you include stuff like Silver Surfer or the Infinity Watch? Well, first of all, some of them are actually still very good choices. For example, you know, you know, um, Nebula's Tech, Philovella's Bio. They're a good team. They're not the best team, but they're a reasonable team. Um, you know, certainly well above average team. And you know, for you know, if you're looking to do something with bio or tech, you know, they give you options. Silver Surfer for some players, this is the character they rely on in raids and so forth. So, you know, I'm making an infographic for everyone. The goal here is to give you options, and you can make choices in these options based on what's best for your account. Okay, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you options. I don't think it's unreasonable for someone to decide they want to have a big silver surfer. He's still a powerhouse, let's say, on war defense. You can use him in raids, and he will do fine even on difficulty three. It's, you know, ultimately, the what's the right choice for you? Legendary, The this is the first, you know, this is the first time that I am putting a character on here who no one has tested. So I'm going to say that up front. Morgan Le Fay, no one's tested, but I'm not only putting her here, but I'm putting her as a high performer because she very well may be the best character in the game. Um, and she's so much better than the other, you know, a lot of these riffraff legendaries that I think it's a no brainer that you're going to want to bring Morgan Le Fay. She's also obviously a cornerstone on the meta, you know, arena team. So I think, you know, she's somebody who, you know, players are going to be focused on right now with good reason so for legendary it's still i think omega red's going to be awesome you know and up until now it's been all about omega red but you know i think most players are going to be bringing both of these characters if they have them going forward people ask me a lot about what i think of invisible woman versus black bolt the short answer is that invisible woman contributes much much more within the nodes than Black Bolt, but she's completely useless or close to useless outside of it. Just a total waste. I mean, I don't really use my Invisible Woman for much of anything. Occasionally on Avengers Tower, she'll make an appearance. Black Bolt does very poorly within the nodes. He's sort of like how Spider-Punk is. It's just, 
damage. And you just <laughs> he's just a damager, but that doesn't do much in Dark Dimension. You want people, uh, you want characters that do health percentage based damage or put debuffs or buff your team, heal your team, do something like that. And, uh, you know, he's just a straight damager. It doesn't do much. So you just kind of drag him through the nodes. <clears throat> but, you know, he actually has some use in Alliance War and uh, occasionally in Arena if you're facing a Dormammu or something like that. Um, in terms of the rest of these these characters, I mean, Jubilee is a still, you know, on a meta raid team. Um, and, you know, she's a reasonable choice. But she's expensive in terms of gear. And I don't think that team is going to be you know, at the top for long, you know, Axemen are well over a year old at this point. You know, Doc Ock, I do use in tech. I Not on every node, but on one node, I use him in tech. Um, you know, Adam Warlock is very, very good. He's certainly a, probably a top three choice here in terms of power level, and he's on a good team. You know, Phoenix is, uh, you know, more viable if you have magic and you have the uncanny build. Sure, he performs very well within the nodes just by giving the defense up uh, to the team and providing ability energy to better characters in the team. So there are options here. None of them are awesome. The legendaries in this game are not very good for the most part, but you know these are the two standouts right here. So I, I hope you you were you know you like this update. I think it's it, this infographic in, in my mind that the general philosophy of it is still on track. I hope I've explained to you why I've included some of the choices I did. From my perspective, my best advice to you is focus on how you help your roster for the long term. The teal gear is too tight, too difficult to get, to blow it on characters that you just are using to get through a node. And I think Dormammu is amazing. He certainly helps you in the Scourge event, and he helps you outside of there. He's great even in the arena and so forth. But ultimately... You know, if you get them three weeks later, but have an account that has uh, characters that are going to help you in the long run or help you in different game modes, I think that's the better choice for almost all players. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. If you have comments, questions, cheers, cheers, happy, sad, angry, mad, you can put them below or go to my Discord, or you can also go to my Twitch stream. That is linked below, too.